Hi, welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this week we are going to show you how to use the offline circulation tool. Wow, this is, this is probably gonna be fantastic for libraries that have never used it, have never seen it, maybe feel a little overwhelmed by the idea of this. We're gonna break it down today. Awesome. So awesome. there's a couple different ways to use Koha's offline circulation tool. There's a built-in HTML5, there's a Firefox add-on, and there's also a desktop application. And that's what Kelly and I are gonna show you today in this week's Monday Minutes. This was created by one of our developers, Kyle Hall, so many, so long ago, and you can download this to your desktop. So let me share my screen with y'all using not my normal desktop. So this is just a little fun look at my, my world here. Um, but once you download the program to a computer, so a CERC computer, you will see this Koha CERC offline tool, and it's a black little swoosh on the Koha logo, and it will be on your desktop. And this is what it looks like when you use it on your computer. So your internet goes down um, and you still have your power and you're able to go ahead and do circulation from a offline CERT tool. And this is really nice because there's two ways that you can do it. You can do it with a borrower file, which if you are partnering with Bywater Solution, we can help set up an option to get that borrower file for you. Or if you're just doing it on the fly and you wanna check things out, you can just scan in a barcode card number from your patron and, and check those items out. So what Kelly will do today is she'll show us two examples or maybe three um, of how we can begin that process. Yeah, absolutely. The key to this, Jesse, is that first checkout you do, you will be asked to save where this file is going to be stored. And I can say this is probably the most important part of it because you want to be able to find right. this file. So when your internet comes back on, you're actually going to upload this file into your, your active Koha um, site. One of the options under settings. We have two options under settings. The first one is to say, select that borrower's file. So as Jesse said, if you get a borrower's file to you mm -hmm. um, from us, this is where you're going to go ahead and pull that information. So you have some information about your borrower. So you're not kind of going about it um, blindly. You know, you're not just putting in a, bar num right. a card number and a barcode. You actually can see some information about your patrons. The second option that you have under settings is to define or pick a path where this file of your transactions is going to be stored. So that's super helpful that you don't have to worry about losing right. it. Um, right. And again, I'm on a computer that's not mine. So that could easily happen if that was the case. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna first go up to settings. I'm gonna select my borrower's file from my desktop. So I've grabbed my borrower's file. I'm gonna to go to my downloads and there is my borrower's file. Once I've added that um, borrower's file, if I enter a card number, I'm actually going to see some history on this borrower, what they have most recently of seven days. So you're usually gonna get this file every seven days. So understand that there could be a lag in, in what information you have, but you do have some information. So that's helpful to have a borrower's file. So Kelly, when you say seven days, does that mean, are you going to an FTP site to download it or is it coming automatically? Uh, okay, as an email? I believe it is coming to an S FTP site. So you would okay, grab great. that, save it somewhere that you would be able to access it if this does happen. And probably 51 weeks of the year, you're just making sure you have it. And then that right. one week you need it, you, you yep. grab it. So maybe to a, a CERC station or multiple CERC stations, if you have them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So as I enter this borrower number, you can see, I have the borrower details over here. I have um, what the patron has checked out. So that's really helpful. Um, if I had some information about this um, borrower. So let me go ahead and grab a barcode, scan that barcode in, and then just add item. I'm not gonna get a lot of information because again, this is not connected to my real Koha. Right. So That's barcodes right. are just gonna be barcodes. 
I have some more barcodes up here, so let me just grab another one. And then one more. And then we'll then we'll check some out to you, Jesse. Okay. 303. And all then right. I'm gonna, when I'm all set, I'm gonna hit this okay button at the bottom. And this is the key part. So that first transaction you do is where you're going to save this downloaded file. When I go to check out Jesse, it's not gonna ask me again because it's gonna compile this all into this one file until I'm ready to do it. Okay, so that's again, a key component here. So after that first transaction that you make, you will save your file name and then that will be the file after you're complete that you will upload into Koha. And of course, we'll show you that in the next step. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep the date in there because that's probably really helpful, um, yep. but I'll just do offline. It's gonna save it as this .koc file. I'm gonna save it to the desktop and hope that works. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So now let's grab, um, And again, another great um, ability with your borrower file is you don't have to actually have their card number. So sometimes, you know, people don't come in with their card number. If right. you don't have a borrower's file to back up, then you wouldn't actually have any way to find their card number. So this is really helpful. Okay. So we, we searched our borrower's file for Jesse. We grabbed her um, number and then we're going to go grab a couple of barcodes. I'm really bad at remembering numbers. <laughs> like saying them a few times. Okay, there we go. Now we've okay. done two transactions. So what are we ready to do? Are we ready to the powers come back on? I mean, the internet's come back on and yeah. we'll <laughs> upload it into, um, upload it into our Koha. Perfect. All right, here we go. Here we go. Under your circulation module is where you're going to find the offline circ option right here at the bottom. And it's going to say upload offline circ file. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab the file off this desktop and upload it into Koha. Not to put any pressure on anybody, but I would certainly do this before you do anything else. Once your power, your internet comes right. back on, load this first before yep. you continue to check out it to other people. Oh, Jesse, look at that. I found it and everything. There it is. <laughs> it's celebration time. We, we didn't even have to edit this one out. We did this on all by ourselves. So we're going to upload that. We get a hundred percent. We're going to add it to the queue. Now think about this. If you had more than one file, you had two circ stations going at the same time, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. would want to make sure all those files are uploaded at the same time. And then Koha will process them as they go. Once you go ahead and upload that file, you can actually see the transactions here. You can select all the transactions or if something you know happened in error, you don't have to pick that um, check out, but you can go ahead and say, yes, process all these circulation transactions that happened during um, that offline time. The great news is when you, when you upload these transactions into Koha, Koha is going to follow the patron category of the patron and what type of item it is and figure out that circulation time. So it's going to show accurately in your patrons records that they checked out an audiobook, a large print and the circulation time is correct. Perfect. And Kelly, will they get notification? Let's say if once the transactions are processed, if they have an email set up for, you know, items that they've checked out or to get a text message, will we see that in the notices tab of the patron account? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it will show, these are all the checkouts that we went through. We did a couple tests. So you'll see a few more than probably you saw me do. And we went ahead and after the second transaction, we, we thought of this question, Jesse, so good. Um, if that patron does have a checkout notification 
checked in their um, messaging preferences, they will get that notification that they did get checkouts. Of course, if out, the internet's out for a few hours, they may not, they will not get it until those um, transactions have been processed and finally uploaded into your Koha system, but they will receive those. Excellent. Well, this is a great resource. So I'm really glad that we spent some time working on offline circulation and, you know, hurricane season is approaching <laughs> and uh, Wi-Fi does get knocked out and you still have power that you can go in and, and continue to work. Yeah, absolutely. So really break it down, download that offline CERC tool, mm -hmm. play around with it. If you want to request a borrower's file from us, go ahead and submit a ticket. We're happy to, to start setting that up for you on a weekly basis. And I always recommend a little binder on the side just to remind people on what to do yeah. um, when in case you need to do this. But it's a really easy tool. And I hope you, you all give this a shot. We have big news to share. Jesse, what's our big news? We are celebrating two years of Monday Minutes. Two years! So for a little guessing game this year, if you can think of the guest who was the most frequent visitor of Monday Minutes in the past year, shoot us an email. Yep. And that email can go to outreach at bywatersolutions.com. The first person to guess correctly will get a gift certificate to their local bookstore. And anyone else who guesses correctly will get some Monday Minute stickers to put on their laptop or notebook to celebrate our second year anniversary. So thanks so much for watching. This has been fantastic and we love what we do and we hope you enjoy it too. Yeah. And as always, keep those suggestions coming. We love hearing from our viewers, you know, what you want to see in Monday Minute. So let us know. You can also email outreach at bywatersolutions.com for those. Perfect. And have a great week, Jesse. Have a great week, Kelly. Bye. Bye.